Okay, in this video I'm going to show you the Dynamic App Finder, uh, which is used to try and find applications that are not natively supported within Axiom. Uh, so you've got a couple of options to deal with them. Uh, option number one is do nothing, so you might miss them and then you'll have to use a different tool or use Axiom to do a bit of manual uh, hex and text and decoding and what have you. Uh, option two, um, if someone else has made a custom artifact for that application, you can uh, load that in uh, and then hopefully it will recover information from that application. Option three is the Dynamic App Finder. Um, so what is the Dynamic App Finder? So I've just loaded in uh, an iPhone ready for extraction and the Dynamic App Finder is in this option here. Uh, and this obviously gives a, a little bit of information on the dynamic app finder uh, what it finds and then what you can do with it so I'm just going to enable it here allow Axiom to find more artifacts but obviously the downside to that is that uh, this will increase the processing time uh, you don't have to do anything within mobile artifacts I've just selected chat and operating system artifacts just to save a bit of time and then click on analyze evidence and then you can see here, um, select the sources and then analyze. So I'm just going to let this run and then um, I'll get back to you with the dynamic app finder screen um, with uh, applications it, it's detected that, that may be of use. Okay, the iPhone extraction has nearly finished, however, we are now presented with this screen here, which is due to the dynamic app finder uh, being activated. Uh, and all it's done is it's identified SQLite databases that may contain um, useful information. So if I go to the uh, first one here, um, not really... Um, any relevant at the minute any relevant information in here but what you can do is uh, there's a filter here so at the minute it's showing all um, databases it thinks uh, as these in it so for argument's sake let's just say we're only interested in databases that may contain any location or chat databases so we could probably use this to minimize our um, databases that need to be reviewed and configured. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick browse around. Um, let's try and find albums. Okay, so here we found a database that has... Um, well, according to the table name, it's called albums. Uh, and this can be applied to anything, um, you know travel applications, um, chat applications, um, it can be pretty broad on the on what the dynamic app finder can find. So for example here uh, we've got an album database and it might be that this is relevant. Um, let's see if there's any more um, Keep going. Uh, I did see something with uh, like last played, so I'm just going to try and find that. Uh, skip. So all these are associated with obviously the uh, the media uh, library. So let me see if I can find it and go. So here we've got a couple of uh, items here, date played, date skipped, date accessed. Um, it might be that that's relevant or not into your investigation. Um, also by default, the um, Unix time is displayed. Now, this is what these numbers displayed here. Um, this is how they are in the uh, database and obviously you need to apply um, the encoding to determine the right time and date. So because this is from um, iTunes or an Apple device, if I select the Apple time it puts it in the correct date time format. And 
these are obviously the different time and dates uh, encodings you can have um, now what you do is you map these columns and what I mean by that is you can see here that this has got date and time so th this is the one that uh, that has been applied to this column and this is what will feature in the report if I just click on that these are the options that you can uh, choose from so if I click date and time here you can only have one date and time you can't have multiple date and times uh, and if I click on custom you know this could be a custom uh, date and time so you, you can have a, a little play around with um, what you want to map to your columns remember these are the ones that will be um, transferred into examine and you also have to tick it here so once we've mapped our columns you get a little preview pane here to see what it's going to look like in uh, examine and then I can just rename this to media library test one and I want to apply that one uh, and let's do another one let's try and find the album one as well so here we're going to change this to sender uh, the apple time is already applied for local time and then we'll just rename this to test 2 and then apply that so I'm just going to do save select artifacts just going to pause it so it's come up with these are the custom artifacts that are created I'm just going to close and then I'm going to bring on the examine screen so these are our results and then we can have a look at those custom ones here and you can see that these are the ones that we uh, saved some of them it's encoded it correctly uh, some of it it hasn't for whatever reason but that's just a broad overview of how the dynamic app finder works like I say it can be applied to you know, anything with a, a, an SQLite database so if you come across anything apply it have a play around with it and uh, hope it works for you.